Hey, Crimson Tide fans, welcome in to our ninth episode here of the Alabama Adapted Athletics Coaches Show on BamaAdapted.com. I'm Alex Boof, joined alongside my partner Spencer Thompson. As you can tell, we got women's basketball practice going on in the background with the music right now. But today we're lucky enough uh, to be joined by men's assistant uh, basketball coach, uh, Michael Opperins. Thank you for joining us today, Oppie. No worries, mate. Good to be here. Yeah, so we can go ahead and get uh, jump right into it. Uh, first off, we have the Hollister Invitational coming up this weekend, and you guys start out uh, by playing Auburn Friday night. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what makes Auburn such a difficult opponent to play against? I mean, Auburn, Alabama, that rivalry goes back to football, mm -hmm. and it's sort of evolved into wheelchair basketball as well. Like They've, they've had a really strong program over the, last, over the last couple of years. They've got a couple of guys who can really fill up the score sheet, so being able to limit them and... Um, take advantage of our opportunities is going to be huge for us. Um, they're well coached. They kind of the the current USA men's head coach, so he's their head coach. So he knows how he knows the game. He knows what to do, and he knows how to prepare them. So we just have to make sure that our adjustments match his adjustments. And your experience is especially prevalent on it because you're a former athlete for the Adapted Athletics program. So what was that experience like for you being in the Iron Roll, as we've nicknamed I it? I never lost to Auburn. Oh, just, good. Just, <laughs> just, say, just saying. Just saying. Never <laughs> lost to them. Um, it's really good to see their program develop over the last couple of years. Um, it was still relatively new when I was in college, but to see them come in and, and really recruit well and really develop their players is, is really good to see. Just makes wheelchair basketball in the U.S. way better and, and develops the, the iron roll. Mm -hmm. Now, this weekend uh, changed up a little bit. Missouri was supposed to be coming mm -hmm. to town, and they had to pull out due to, uh, due to health concerns. Does that change anything drastically in the team in terms of preparation? Because you were preparing for four games, and now you've only got two. Yeah, it's we, we obviously wanted more games, especially against collegiate teams. It's really good. Um, Missouri drop, dropping out gives us an opportunity to play against ABC Medical, so the guys will be playing against me. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just another opportunity to play. So I think they're, they're ready for that, and any time they can get try to get one up on their assistant <laughs> coach, they're going to take it, which is always fun. And you get to try to get revenge on them this week after last week. What did you attribute that loss to? They played really well. Mm -hmm. They played really well. Everything that we've been teaching them over the, la mm -hmm. over the course of the last year is, is starting to come to fruition, mm -hmm. which is really good to see. Sucks it was against me, and, <laughs> um, but it's really good to really good for them to, to, to really be coming together at the, the right time of the year. Uh, before the season, when we met you, with you, you uh, told us that this team, their biggest uh, challenge would be themselves. Mm -hmm. How have you really seen them progress and grow throughout this season? It's been really a season of ups and downs. Like We've had some, some really high highs, some really low lows, but the guys have been able to, to <coughs> keep the ship right through the, uh, through the course of the season and, and progress. Like, so it's a marathon, not really a sprint. So right. at the they're not the same team they were at the beginning of the season, which is really good to see. They're not even the same team they were a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to see, the growth and finally living up to the potential that we, uh, myself and, and Coach Ford, see in them, which is really, really good to see. Which do you think was more, uh, lack of a better term, devastating, which had more of an impact on the team, the loss to Whitewater or the loss to Arizona in the last time they lost after you guys beat them here yeah, at yeah, Trent Arden? Yeah. Uh, I think it's both of them had profound impacts on, on the way that we went about things. Um, I think we learned not necessarily one was worse than the other or one was better than the other. I think it was we, uh, we took that and we learned and we went back to, not, not back to the drawing board, but we, we doubled down on what made us really, really good. Yep. So next time we play them, I'm expecting a different outcome. Oh, yeah. Obviously, this weekend, uh, this tournament is going to be held at home in Strandhorn mm -hmm. Arena, but y'all have been on, on the road a lot this season. Yes. So what has really the main differences or challenges between playing at home versus on the road besides the travel? I mean, there's nothing like playing in Tuscaloosa. Mm -hmm. Like, filling this place up is awesome. So if we can do that for, for Friday night's blackout game, it's going to be great. Playing at home is different. Um, just different set of fans. Sometimes you don't have as many fans as you want. I think when we went to Auburn, uh, a month ago, we had so many people in the crowd. Yep. It was, it was yeah. absolutely nuts. Mm -hmm. um, and so playing on the road is always is always harder. But playing at home, you have access to, well, you've got the Strand Harden Arena, so you, you're playing in the same place that you train every single day. So you know the baskets, you know the floor, you just, you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so playing at Auburn here on Friday, it's, it's going to be great because we're going to be comfortable, but at the same time, we're still going to try to take it to them. And you also talked about how a lot of crowd members showed up to Auburn. Certainly, there's certainly not as long a drive as other places like Whitewater or uh, or Illinois or Texas mm -hmm. when it uh, went to on the road. From not just from a coach's experience on the bench, from a player's experience on the floor, 
What, uh, what does that mean to you to have so many fans starting to surround this program with so much support? So it, uh, really good story is that when we had the ROTC here, mm-hmm. um, I think it was my senior year, we were playing, I think it's UTA here. Mm-hmm. They're right behind UTA's bench, just absolutely giving them hell. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most funny thing because they're trying to listen to, in a, a timeout and they just can't hear a single thing. <laughs> and so I spoke to a couple of the UTA players afterwards and they're like, yeah, we hate it. We absolutely, we absolutely hate it. Um, but I think having the home crowd here is, is and just the, seeing the, the passion of the fans, like wheelchair basketball, once people see it, they just keep yep, coming back. Yep, yep. They absolutely keep coming back. So to be able to see that it's, you know the fans who are here, you 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 get to develop like a relationship with them mm-hmm. as far as like they see you on a de- like they see you every single game. Mm-hmm. You see them every single game. So you, you really get to know and you get to see how much they love the sport yep. of wheelchair basketball, but also Alabama Adaptive Athletics. Absolutely. Friday night uh, for y'all will be f- uh, senior night, and y'all plan on honoring three athletes, Luke McDowell, Parther Venkatram, and Austin Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what those three athletes have meant uh, to the university during their time here? So I was actually here on Austin Smith's recruitment trip. Mm. Um, I was a senior at the time about to graduate, and I knew that, he would come in and, and make a, a, a me, a me, almost an immediate impact to our culture. Mm-hmm. So to see him from when he was a, a senior in high school to now a senior in college, and just I don't recognize the same guy. Like yep. His growth yeah. over uh, the last five years and the last two that I've been a part of has been really good to see. Luke I've known for like 10 years because I actually played against him in Australia in the oh, Australian yeah. League. Again, the growth that he's shown in his time here is like amazing. Yep. Like, don't recognize that guy. Partha was a little bit different. So I actually knew the guy who, um, I knew some of his coaches back in India um, because I got coached by them at the same time. So I heard about this guy, like absolutely massive unit who could mm-hmm. shoot, um, mm-hmm. sh- could shoot the ball really well. And um, finally got to meet him, uh, I think it was like February of 2022, something like that. And I was like, my God, this guy is living up to all the promise and all the hype. Um, so taking a chance on someone who, from India, who we hadn't really seen before, was it paid off. Mm-hmm. And so these, those three were pretty instrumental in, in building the culture over the last couple of years that were able to get us to the point last year where we get a national championship and still compete for that one this year. Mm-hmm. So their impact on this program has been huge. Mm-hmm. And you've been on the assistant coaching staff for a few years, and you men- mentioned with uh, having your own senior night a couple of, a couple of years ago. So, does it ever feel weird or more sentimental when you're seeing the next generation of seniors graduating from the program? I mean, you never want to lose. You, you never want to lose any of your guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really lucky to have my parents here um, mm-hmm. for my senior night, and I know that Austin's parents are going to be absolutely loving that he's, oh, yeah. um, for his senior night. Um, it's a shame Partha and, and Luke's parents can't be here, but they've got a really good support network yep. in town who are going to stand with them. So oh, it's really, really good to – it's going to be really good. It's going to be really sad at the same time as, as their last mm-hmm. sort of home tournament and home games. So uh, hopefully we can win a national championship to send them mm-hmm. send them off. Well, I think that's all the time we have on the show today. Thank you again for joining us, yep. Oppie, today. And uh, thank you, Crimson Tide fans, for watching wherever you may be watching. Uh, be sure to tune in next week when we have uh, we interview Coach Hines and, and look forward to Women's Nationals that will be here in Strandhorn Arena next weekend. Also, like take this time to thank our many sponsors uh, that help us do what we do here at Alabama Adapted Athletics, Hollister, Honey Stinger, Fizzy Elite, Powerade, and many more. All help us do what we love to do every single day. Be sure to tune in next week and roll tide. Roll tide.